dollars. The first part of this video is mostly notes, sorry, um, but we're going to be looking at transforming the functions we've been talking about. These concepts are going to apply all the way through the, uh, the course as we look at different types of functions. We're going to be dealing with reflections over the x-axis. This happens when we put a negative in front of the function. Reflection over the y-axis when we put a negative inside the function. Now in this first section we're dealing with transformations. We're actually not going to see this, but we are going to see it later, so I wanted to go ahead and prepare you for that. When we multiply something in front of the function, we've got a vertical stretch or compression. It is a stretch when the number's bigger than one, and it is a compression when it's smaller than one. When we add a number at the end of the function, it's a vertical translation. When we subtract a number inside the function, it's a horizontal translation. Now that's all confusing, but it makes a little bit more sense when we look at an actual example. So I'm using the parent function, which you studied your vocabulary right, so you know what that is, of f of x equals x squared. So in this transform function, I would have hinted all the functions, all the transformations we're going to deal with in these functions. I did skip the reflection over the y-axis because, as I said, we're not going to get that until later. So I put a negative in front. When you see that negative in front, that's the reflection. The number, I chose a number that was bigger than 1. So remember, that's a stretch, not a compression, a stretch. But if it was smaller than 1, then it'd be a compression. Inside, I've got a vertical translation. Now, remember inside, this sign is actually the opposite. So this is actually a positive horizontal translation. And then the end, I've got the vertical translation going up and down. It's the same sign. So this is also a positive uh, translation. Now, what this all looks like, you're going to see in the next part of the video, but first I've got to erase my board. Okay, scholars. I've got my board all erased and everything new that we need to uh, use to actually be able to see how these transformations work. These transformations are great because it makes it very easy to figure out what the graph of a function will look like as long as you're familiar with the parent function, the function that gives birth to all of them. So right here I took the parent function of the quadratic equation f of x equals x squared. Just did a real quick uh, evaluation of some x values and put it into the equation. 0 squared is 0, 1 and negative 1 is squared is 1, 2 and negative 2 squared is 4, and 3 and negative 3 squared is 9. And then I just did a rough sketch. Uh, the rough sketch will serve our purposes for uh, right now. Now, all a transformation does is just take this graph, pick it up, move it around, up, down, left, right, stretch it, compress it, all those things. So, if we actually had a graph that we could pick up and move around, that would help us see what these transformations do. And I just so happen to have a graph that we can pick up and move around. So, I'm just going to take my little parabola that I made, which rough approximates the um, parabola we have, the original one. And instead of doing all of the transformations at once, I thought it would be a good idea to separate each one out before we see what it looks like all together. So the first one we're going to look at is when we reflect the graph over the x-axis. All that is is flipping the graph over. That's all that is. So that is what the graph of y equals negative x squared would look like. Next, let's take a look at x, the quantity of x minus 2 squared. Inside, that's going left or right. But inside, we do always have to remember to do the opposite direction. So this says minus 2. I don't want to go in the negative direction, which would be this way. I want to go in the positive direction, to the right. So I'm just going to take my graph. I'm just going to take my graph and move it over two spaces. One, two. And then that's the graph of y equals the quantity of x minus 2 squared. Now let's look down here where we've got that 
number at the end, not inside. So we're adding one. When it's outside, we are going in the direction that the sign says. So this is positive, we're going in the positive direction up. If it was negative, we would go down the negative direction. So take my parabola and just move it up one space. Just one space, and that's my graph now for x squared plus 1. Finally, here, y equals 3x squared. Now the number in front, remember, is either going to be a stretch. So it's like we take our, our parabola, and if we just pull up on it, it's going to get narrower. But if instead, if it's a compression, if the number is smaller than 1, we're going to push down on a parabola and make it wider. So the larger the number, the narrower the parabola. So this, I'm going to do a stretch. I want to make it narrower, so I'm stretching up on it. Now this is just a very rough approximation, but the idea is that you should get it to be narrower. Okay? And that's y equals 3x squared. Now let's combine them all together to get this g of x equals negative 3 times the quantity of x minus 2 squared plus 1. Okay? So I already did my stretch. Okay? So I've taken care of that. Or rather, I should say that. I want to do my reflection. So I'll just flip it over. The minus 2 inside, that's left or right. But as we said, it's opposite sign. So that's positive direction. 1, 2. And then finally, my vertical translation going up or down, I'm going to go up one space. And there's my graph. This is particularly helpful when you have multiple choice questions, as you will on your final test. Because if you can know the transformations, you can just look at the graph and know what it should look like. So you should be able to pick out the answer just from that. So, go ahead and practice your problems, and good luck, scholars.